there's a new Azure exam in town. And no, wait, it's coming in mid July and in beta, but whatever. And its name is, or should I say number? Uh, whatever. Yeah, it's the AC 700, guys. A few days ago, Microsoft announced a new Azure certification coming later this summer, so I thought I'd give you guys some info on what the exam for the certification will be about and give you guys some pointers on what you should uh, prepare and study for if you want to pass the exam. The Azure Network uh, Engineer Associate certification will be given to you if you pass the AC700 exam, which will be coming in beta in mid-July and then probably go live later this fall. As stated by Microsoft, this certification will be for people who have subject matter expertise in uh, recommending, uh, planning, implementing and managing Azure networking solutions. And the exam will test your skills in core network infrastructure, uh, hybrid networking, routing, securing and monitoring VNets, and last but not least, private access to Azure services. If you're considering taking this exam while it's in its beta phase, you should remember that you will not be getting your score immediately as the beta phase of the exam will be for Microsoft to get the scoring and the difficulty part of the exam just right. So if you pass your exam while it's in this beta phase, you won't even know it until a couple of hours, a couple of weeks after the exam is gone live. That means that if you want to be one of the first to have this certification, you should actually wait until the exam goes live. So with that being said, let's discuss some of the skills that this exam will measure. Seeing as it's an associate level certification, I expect it to be quite a bit of overlap with the expert certifications. So if you've previously taken the AC303 exam, for example, there is going to be some overlap. And there might also be some overlap with the AC104 exam if you've previously taken this one. I'll leave some links down in the description with some resources for you to cover, so be sure to check those out as well. There are five main areas listed in the skills measured section of this exam, and those are design, manage and implement hybrid networking, design and implement core networking infrastructure, design and implement routing, secure and monitor networks, and last but not least, design and implement private access to Azure services. Of these areas, hybrid networking counts for 10 to 15%, core networking infrastructure accounts for 20 to 25%, and the biggest area is routing, which accounts for 25 to 30%, and securing and monitoring networks accounts for 15 to 20%, and last but not least, managing private access to Azure services accounts for 10 to 15%. If we dig a little deeper into the first area, the hybrid networking part, we see that there are three main areas that you need to know about, and that is site-to-site -site VPNs, point-to-site VPNs, and Azure Express routes. Now, site-to-site -site VPNs and point-to-site VPNs are pretty standard services that are quite easily labable, so make sure you know about the different SKUs and that you have tried setting it up a couple of times. For site-to-site -site VPNs, you should have uh, knowledge about setting up connections between VNets and between VNets and your on-prem environments. And you also should know when to use route-based VPNs and when you should use policy-based VPNs. For point-to-site VPNs, you should know all about the different authentication methods that are available for us. And that includes RADIUS, Certificates, uh, Azure AD, and OpenVPN. And for both point-to-site and site-to-site -site VPNs, you should know all about troubleshooting connectivity issues. So make sure you have set them up a couple of times in your lab environments. ExpressRoute is a service that's a little bit harder to lab on, so I suggest you check out stuff like John Seville's uh, Azure Express Route Deep Dive on YouTube. I'll leave a link down in the description. And other than that, you should read up on the documentation around Azure Express Route, uh, especially around SKUs, tiering, and encryption, and so on. Moving along to the second main area of this exam, you have four main topics that you need to be competent in, and that is private IP addressing for VNet's name resolution, cross VNet connectivity, and Azure Virtual VAN. This means that you should know about subnetting, uh, private and public DNS zones, peering between VNet's uh, gateway transits, uh, and a few things about the Azure Virtual VAN service, including SKUs, uh, connecting gateways, creating hubs, using a network appliance in a hub, routing within a hub and connection points. 
The area that accounts for most of the AC700 exam is the implementing and managing routing. This accounts for 25-30% of the exam and consists of six topics. And that is VNet routing, Azure Load Balancer, Azure Application Gateway, Azure Front Door, Azure Traffic Manager, and the Azure Virtual Network. Not. If you have previously taken the AC303 exam or the AC304, the middle four ones here should be known territory, but let's go through the list, shall we? Within VNet routing, you need to know about user-defined routing tables, how to associate them to subnets, and doing forced tunneling and also troubleshooting, troubleshooting routing issues. I suggest you just create a couple of VNets with varying IP ranges here. Uh, pair them together, have some routing tables on the different subnets, and simply lab your way to knowledge. And make sure to have some VMs in that setup, so you can use the next top functionality of the Network Watcher, or uh, the Effective Routes for tool for network instant interfaces, just to verify your routing actually works. With Azure Load Balancer, you are required to have a basic knowledge of them, uh, including the different SKUs, when to choose a public, when to choose an internal uh, load balancer, actually setting one up, creating some rules, and so on. So deploy a couple of them, explore the options you have in terms of configuration and rules, and um, yeah, just make sure that it actually works before you move along. The Azure front door topic is a section where I'll uh, expect that you will have some questions about features that are in preview right now, since the skills outline uh, lists choosing the right uh, Azure Front Door SKU, and there are not a lot of Azure Front Door SKUs available in GA right now. Other things you need to know about the Azure Front Door service includes the configuration of SSL termination, end-to-end -end encryption, uh, multi-site listeners, back-end targets, routing and redirection rules, and of course the health probes including HTTP response codes. And since Azure Front Door isn't all that expensive, I would recommend you go over to the Microsoft Docs and go through the quick starts and the tutorials that they have there in order to get your knowledge of Azure Front Door up to where you need to be. With routing out of the way, let's take a look at securing and monitoring Azure networks. And there are four main topics that you need to be competent about here, and that is the uh, Azure Firewall, NSG's Web Application Firewall, and monitoring. You need to be able to design an Azure Firewall deployment, implement it, and configure some rules. In addition to that, you need to be able to implement Azure Firewall Manager policies, uh, creating Azure Firewalls within Azure Virtual WAN hubs, and as well as integrating Azure Virtual WAN with third-party Azure, Azure Network Virtual Appliance, or NVA. I haven't found a great deal of uh, resources that are up to date on the Azure Firewall, so make sure that you uh, have a good understanding of the Azure Firewall fundamentals. Uh, I recommend, for example, checking out Azure Academy's video on that topic, link down in the description. And other than that, just uh, go through the documentation that Microsoft has, and also check out the uh, tutorials that they have on the Microsoft Docs page. As for uh, NSGs or network security groups, I expect that you're quite comfortable in working with them if you've ever done anything in Azure. Uh, but besides in getting to know the creation and the associating uh, part of NSGs, make sure that you know how to interpret the S NSG flow logs, IP flow, and that you know your way around creating and managing rules. In the skills outline, there's also a mention of application security groups, or ASGs, so make sure that you know what they are and um, how to create one and associate it. Web Application Firewall, or WAF, is a service that you can deploy together with the Azure Application Gateway, the Azure Front Door, or the Azure Content Delivery Network services. And for the AC700 exam, you need to know about configuring uh, prevention or detection mode, configuring rules for Azure Front Door or the Azure Application Gateway, and you also need to know um, about implementing and associating a WAF policy. Now, Microsoft Security Community did a webinar on WAF a little while ago, so I'll leave a link to the recording of that session down in the description. When it comes to monitoring networks, it's uh, a lot about just knowing the Azure Network Watcher and how to use the possibilities that it represents. 
Um, you should know about the connection monitoring, traffic analytics, NSG flow logs, and the generic configure Azure Network Watcher. But within monitoring networks, you also need to know about uh, configuring network health alerts uh, and logging, and you also need to know how to enable and configure diagnostics logging for NSGs. So get to the documentation of the network watcher and more specifically go through the connection monitoring, traffic analytics, NSG flow logs, and you should be pretty good to go as for monitoring networks. Now for the last of the main areas of the AC700 exam, namely designing and implementing private access to Azure services. This only accounts for 10 to 15% of the exam, so it's a bit smaller than the other areas. It only has three main topics, and that is Azure Private Link and uh, Azure Private Endpoint, Service Endpoints, and VNet integration for a Platform as a Service or PaaS service. For the first part, you need to know how to create an Azure private link service and how to integrate it with DNS and on-prem clients. You also need how to plan, create and configure private endpoints. To learn more about private link and private endpoints, I would recommend uh, studying the Azure Academy's video on this topic, a link down in the description. And as for learning more about DNS integration, I would just head on over to uh, Microsoft's documentation on this topic. For service endpoints, you need to know how to create them and how to configure policies, tags, and access for them. And to know more about uh, this, I would check out John Savile's video on Azure Virtual Network and PaaS Network Controls. It covers a bit more than just the service endpoints, but I would recommend that you check it out either way and just consider the extra knowledge a bonus. The last topic that AZ700 exam covers is VNet integration for a dedicated PaaS service. Here you need to know about how to configure an app service for regional VNet integration, Azure Kubernetes uh, service for regional VNet integration, and how to configure clients to access an app service environment. While app service is uh, relatively easy to set up VNet integration for, it's basically just a couple of clicks in the portal. I would also recommend you read upon the routing and application settings around this topic. Uh, so go through Microsoft's own documentation on this area. For the AKS or Azure Kubernetes service part, you should know about private clusters. Uh, so read through the docs on this topic and check out Microsoft Cloud Native Global Back Belts video on AKS private clusters. I'll link both down in the description for you. And lastly, we have the app service environment, which basically is just an app service that runs fully isolated and connected to a subnet within your own VNet. This means that it will have its own dedicated subnet and uh, that's where your app service will be available through. Every worker in this app service will then have its own IP address in that subnet. And this means that the app service will also be able to utilize any private endpoints that you have in your VNet. Uh, but sadly, I don't think that it supports any peering in your VNet as of now. So this last topic basically consists of having the knowledge on how you should connect to a service that lives within a subnet in your own VNet. And by that, we have covered all the topics from the skills outline that Microsoft provides us with. That means that if you know about all the topics that I've covered in this video, you should be good to go for the AC700 exam. And if you found this uh, video helpful, or if you have any input or uh, uh, additional thoughts, I would love to hear them. Uh, so leave them down in the comments. And uh, I will also appreciate a like and subscribe if you may. And other than that, see ya.